Yo, what is up everybody? New cards, not in Daybreak, but new cards without a new set. Sort of, let's jump into this. So, uh, Shadow Stars Month 8 is the Lunar set. We don't have a ton of Lunar cards to go into the set. I mean, obviously there's Bacterius, there's Pandalins, there's the Camels. That doesn't make an entire Shadow Stars set. So, Dan is releasing some cards from Moonrise early, effectively. Uh, so these cards will be legal come October 1st, since they release September 1st. So be aware that there are going to be some extra Lunar cards as part of the Daybreak meta that weren't revealed already to throw a wrench into everybody's deck building processes because that wasn't already complicated enough with Daybreak. So let's jump into the cards and see what might see play, what doesn't see play, go from there. So we're going to start with the Divine Rune because, hey, Divine Runes are pretty important. So pretty straightforward, Artemis, one cost Lunar. You can add three to it, same as any other Divine Rune. And then you can disenchant Lunar from this Artemis in order to target an opponent's face-up card and suppress it until that opponent's next end phase. How good is that effect? I think the effect is really strong. However, it's not a card that you can use in response to abilities. So if your opponent plays Equal Inks on their turn and goes Equal Inks next its effect, you can't then Artemis to suppress it. You have to have, basically, your opponent has to have board state already. You play Artemis, you can then suppress it. Artemis is good going kind of second E-ish. Uh, also bear in mind there's no Nexus Celestial for uh, Lunar yet, so you're only really doing stuff with Artemis to suppress your opponent's stuff, and how good is that? And against Viserys, against Galaxy, against a Foamy, against maybe a Spectaris, against a Mastation, like, it's a pretty powerful effect for sure. I definitely think this card is really strong, but it doesn't go in every deck because it's not really going to respond and answer things, it's going to just kind of give you more tools to respond to your opponent, if that makes sense. Kind of like where you can go suppress your foamy, now I can bench attack over your foamy. Maybe now you protect your foamy because it's suppressed. Or suppress your eagling so you can't use it on the following turn to now blow up my other back rows. Could be relevant. However, I could also ascend over that eagling still. I could just play another card next to eagling and maybe nexus off the eagling, stuff like that. So I think the card's strong, but I don't think it's going to be super crazy. Where it does get really powerful and interesting is you can suppress any face-up card that your opponent has. That includes other Divine Runes. If they have an Aeolus, Aeolus to play, don't want them searching with Aeolus, turn it off for the next turn. Turn off Zeus so they can't buff and debuff stuff with Zeus Demeters. I guess turn off a Poseidon and Hephaestus, less relevant there, but allowing you to turn off runes is pretty important. It is also important to note that suppressing a rune doesn't change its enchantment status, so if you suppress, say, a Mount Olympus, they can still race to the top with that Suppress Mount Olympus in play. So your mileage may vary. Uh, suppressing runes is pretty interesting. It also provides a lot of counterplay to kind of these tower bag of wins strategies where you go big beefy thing. You can now suppress the bag of wins and then just throw an earthquake at something. So it gives you more options to kind of penetrate into your opponent's board that when they're trying to provide all these little protection effects to stop things. So I think Artemis is going to be pretty powerful in that sense, as more of a control card. Less so as a, I shut off that effect so you can't float foamies and stuff. But we'll see how it gets played, especially with the limited Lunar Pool in the set. I don't think it's seeing a ton of play, but I definitely see it being used as an option against some more degenerate or weird, wonky combo strategies where you want to kind of put an artifact into play or put some protection on something. Artemis can just shut off that protection and then do stuff. It can shut off, like... A Ferrageist, so you can actually interact with Ferrageist more. So I think that's where Artemis is going to shine, just shutting off the things that stop you from interacting with cards otherwise. But we'll have to see. All right, next up, Dracid, a 2-2 for 1 Lunar. You can target a 1 Spirit Elestral and exchange its base attack with this Dracid's base attack until the end phase. When a player casts Rock in a Hard Place, you can special send this Dracid to Dracking from your hand or deck. So that first effect, doing the stat swap for one turn, is interesting, not great. It definitely allows you to kind of sneak in some uh, knockouts and where you just kind of drop a drag kid, steal like a Spectaris's attack, attack into it, and you're still bigger than the Spectaris even after the buffs, or steal a Viserys at four, is now a three attacker with its buff. Like, there's shenanigans you can pull with this will allow you to trade into attack position Elestrals, but that's not the important part of this card. The important part of this card, it's another uh, rock and a hard place ascension. So it kind of adds more Rock and a Hard Place shenanigans to the deck. However, my problem with the Rock and a Hard Place deck right now is that it's almost always correct to just lose the Elestral in play rather than the Rune. So, for example, you play Drakid. If you don't lose the Elestral and you get rid of your protection, they go into Draking. 
which we'll get into dragging in a second, it's more beneficial for that Elishal not to be there for dragging. With Kerbis, it's more beneficial for the thing with spirits on it right now, like your Elestral, to not be there for Kerbis to just pop and run over anyway. So, it's a little bit of a miss there, because it's almost now always correct to just lose the Elestral to a rock in the hard place than your interaction, potentially, but your mileage may vary depending on what you have back row at the time. Let's go into Draking though, as I'm talking about it. Draking is a 1 Lunar, 1 Water, 7 4. When this Draking destroys an Elestral in battle, you can special cast that Elestral from the Underworld with Lunar and Water Spirits only. While that Elestral is on your field, this Draking cannot be attacked. Okay. That's pretty good, but not great. This is kind of a bad, or maybe not necessarily bad, but different Capra Gold. So why do we say it's a bad cap? So cap allows you to revive your own stuff. Your deck is built around the stuff in your deck. So reviving your stuff in your deck with cap goal, that's water, generally beneficial more so than dracking. However, dracking, reviving your opponent's stuff, if you're playing against a water or lunar deck, being able to take advantage of your opponent's water or lunar lustrals is pretty cool. Uh, the big important thing though is that dracking cannot get attacked while you have that elestral. So while it kind of has its, uh, what's the vampire word? They're thralls. You can't attack it, you have to attack the little guys first, but you're gonna throw like Earthquake at this. If it does connect into an Elestral and steal it, it does give itself Royal Protection. So you're looking at something like, again, Earthquake being more relevant, Race to the Top being more relevant against Drag King. Just kind of things that pop it directly are still pretty relevant. That four defense though is pretty low. So your mileage may vary, but there's ways to get around it without going after its Thrall, however, when it dies, you don't give the control of it back to your opponent. They still keep that little guy. So it does potentially allow you to go super wide with your opponent's stuff. And if they're trying to play an underworld strategy, like weird, like Lockagon combo, you can steal their receivers and heal up and stuff like that. So I think that'd be a really interesting, maybe counter meta option for Lunar decks right now in Daybreak. We'll have to see what other Lunar stuff goes forward. But as far as a deck build with Drag King and Kerbis and Rockin' Hard Place, I don't know if there's enough here to make that work. Um, Drag King and Drag Kid don't work great with Poseidon, so you're going to have to take away some of your Water Nexus slots, so put in these as slots. Uh, Drag King still loses pretty hard to removal, unlike Kerbis that can at least pop more back row to get over things, so it loses to removal a little bit less because you get more direct value out of it, but Drag King's a little bit more of a snowball card because once you steal that Elestral, now you can attack the Elestral and do other shenanigans with it. So... Uh, I guess it's also worthwhile to mention that Draking will steal any enchantment cost Celestial, so if you happen to attack over like a Cryovern or another 2-drop, you're stealing a 2-drop and being able to hit for additional damage, now you have two big bodies on board, that's also relevant, but I think the Kerbis stuff is still technically more relevant here, as the Lunar stuff uh, isn't super great in my opinion to go with that deck right now. But we'll have to see what people cook up with the Draking stuff. I think it's a really cool card. I just don't know how impactful it will be with the minimal Lunar support and having to take away slots from your really good Water Nexus stuff to input Lunar. Next up is Fawnlet, a 3-2 for 1 Lunar. When you normal cast this Fawnlet, you can search your deck for an Artemis or Thera Heart added to your hand. Thera Heart is not relevant right now. We don't know what that card is publicly. This Fawnlet gets one defense for every Lunar Enchanting Artemis on the field. So this could potentially be a 3-6 if you have an Artemis on board. It still gets run over by like Spectaris and stuff. Or if your opponent has an Artemis, hey, they can just suppress it and it doesn't get the defense boof. So uh, this potentially is a really good defense buff. It's an Ella Chick in a sense for just Artemis. I think this card is basically useless right now in Lunar because you just play Ella Chick instead. There's almost no reason to play Fawnlet over Elechick at the moment. Fawnlet, yes, gets a very big defensive body. Imagine if you have two Artemises in play with four Lunar on the Meech. That's huge, but it just gets removed. And that's a lot of Spirits to Risk on board, so I don't think Fawnlet is playable at all right now. We'll have to see what their heart is in the future. Maybe with Moonrise, Fawnlet becomes actually worthwhile playing. Or with more Lunar decks that require Artemis and don't necessarily want to run Elechick due to Spirit Math, Fawnlet might see the play, but... Generally, I don't think Fallen is good at all, unless their heart is maybe worthwhile fetching. Nobby, a 4-1 for 1 Lunar. When this Nobby receives one or more Lunar, you can give each Elestral that's not Lunar or Solar Enchanted minus to attack until the end phase. When this Nobby destroys an Elestral in battle, you can special send it to Doppelgator from your hand or deck. So, just like Fallen, Doppelgator is not relevant right now. We don't know what that card is. So, let's just talk about its core effect as part of the Daybreak meta that we're in. 
So when it receives one or more lunar, you can give each Elestral that's not solar or lunar enchanted minus two attack. So that means if you're splashing this in any deck that's not solar and lunar, you're going to be reducing your own attacks as well. However, this is like a Warmite on steroids, and is Warmite playable right now? Not really. It's definitely a techable option. Uh, but Nobby is a 4 1 that gives minus 2 to everything on the board, depending on your opponent's tech spirits and what you're playing against, is, I think, pretty powerful. This gets over a lot of general threats. If you kind of nexus to it or add additional spirits to it in the same turn, you can potentially reduce your attacks of your opponents even more, make it even easier to get over stuff. Uh, the real big thing of this card it definitely is looking to ascend in Doppelgator, and without Doppelgator in the format, we don't know what the card is yet, I don't think Navi is worth playing that much. Uh, maybe it goes into fives. Maybe. Uh, but I don't think so. I think this might just be more of a counter card to fives. Or reduces the six stats down further than they already were uh maybe uh it's interesting for sure but until we know what doppelgator is nobby is probably not playable but playable enough that it wouldn't surprise me for people to try to tech it in against some matchups but in general it's not that playable so what does this mean for lunar going into daybreak now so lunar can actually play a deck now maybe in daybreak I still don't think there's enough Lunar cards in Daybreak to make a proper Lunar deck, and a lot of the Lunar cards here, as we just mentioned, aren't splashable as much as we want them to be, and they're definitely focused on Lunar stuff, like Fallen Knight for Artemis is not playable, Nobby is maybe playable, Drag King is fine, but I think Kerbis strategy is still better, but it's nice to have additional Ascensions in that deck in case you don't draw your Eddies, but you can search Eddies with Pell Aquarius perhaps. So if you're really going all in on Kerbis, there's ways to find Eddie anyway. So yeah, uh, that's the Lunar stuff for now. I don't think anything grain breaking here right now. Artemis is probably, out of all these cards, the most likely to see some amount of play, at least in side decks. Especially since people are already playing things like Spectarist with Lunar Spirit, so it's not a huge include or ask to add a few more Lunar Spirits to make Artemis more viable. And the Drakid Drekking line also might be playable because we already have Rock and a Hard Place and support cards for those cards. We'll have to wait and see, and the rest of them are just, I think, wait and see for the rest of Moonrise come January. So that's my thoughts here. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a good one.